Welcome to the Kupinger Coal Analyst Chat. I'm your host. My name is Matthias Reinwart. I'm Senior Analyst and Lead Advisor with Kupinger Coal Analysts. My guest today is, um, I think, the, for the first time on camera, Warwick Ashford. He is working for Kupinger Coal as a Senior Analyst, and he's working out of London. Hi, Warwick. Good to see you. Uh, hi, Matt, Matthias, and uh, good to be here, and uh, quite strange to be actually seeing you this time. That's true, but as EIC, our conference is coming up, we m might have a chance to see each other also in person, in real life, as strange as that may sound. Um, we, yeah, we are, we are here today to talk or to take a step back from the cybersecurity market and to look at it as a whole. And we want to have a look, as analysts do, um, at a bigger perspective, how it's changing, uh, what we expect to happen in the future. So really a, a more gen general view on the topic. So how will cybersecurity, the market and the, the environment for all, for all organizations and in the end people will change. So how this cybersecurity market is evolving. So to first to, to lay the ground, um, what actually um, is the perspective that we're taking? We have all this um, work from home already behind us, or we're still in it. As we are looking into cameras, we are still working from home. But um, we have to deal with the world after the pandemic. Maybe that is a good starting point. What do you expect for this changing world? What What are the key, yeah, the key aspects that we have to look at when you look at cybersecurity in this new um, surrounding that we're working in? Well, I think, as you've mentioned, the pandemic has really changed the way we do everything. And I think that, if anything, uh, the cybersecurity market has gained even greater importance in this post-COVID era, and it will continue to grow and evolve. And, you know, just looking at the way COVID is going to affect different markets, I think, like most IT markets, the cybersecurity market will be one of those ones that, that continues. And we can maybe look a bit later at the, the kind of uh, areas that will be stronger. Uh, as ever, the cybersecurity market is, is being grown by the fact that there's increasing reliance of business on information technology. Uh, there is a growing number of security and data protection regulations. Obviously, the shift of crime online has only gained a pace uh, since the pandemic. And uh, there's also an increasing incidence of state-sponsored cyber attacks for industrial espionage and uh, disruption of uh, critical infrastructure. So those are all kind of the general big sky things uh, happening. But the cyber criminals are focusing particularly on new and emerging technologies that organizations are adopting as they embrace digital transformation uh, to cut costs and improve performance and support new business models. And, you know, we've seen that come to the fore with the pandemic people have had to adjust. And so obviously the new sort of emerging technologies is where they've gone. And of course, as ever, the cyber criminals uh, have followed suit. Right. And when we look at these, this, uh, these two aspects that you mentioned, on the one hand, um, there's really a growing number of threats. There's a changing work environment. And on the other hand, uh, we want to be as efficient as possible. We want to um, be as cost efficient as possible. Um, these are two important drivers. Where are other drivers for this change? What do you expect to continue to grow and what do you expect to change? Well, the central established cybersecurity technologies that are core to sort of modern forward looking cybersecurity programs are expected to grow and evolve to fulfill the leading roles in cyber defense. So these are the established technologies like it includes identity related solutions, uh, data, like things like data access governance, endpoint protection, detection and response, EDR, uh, unified endpointing management, UEM, fraud reduction intelligence platforms, API management and security solutions, those kinds of things, and even DLP, uh, that, that will carry on. Uh, but the emerging technologies are the ones that I think are the most interesting at the moment. And these are the ones that are a part of this adapting to this new world of working from home, remote working. And these include things like uh, network detection and response. And then we've got the extended detection and response, uh, but as well as things like security orchestration, automation and response or SOAR, uh, secure information sharing, uh, security for business applications and cloud delivered security. 
and Security Operations Centers as a Service, or SOC as a Service, and of course, DevOps as security, because that's one of the, the big trends that we're seeing now in organizations to in terms of efficiency and so on. So it's all more or less connected to the to the move to the cloud. So we are really changing our infrastructures. We are, uh, and we need to be uh, uh, capable of providing cybersecurity for the cloud environments, but also for for um, traditional on-premises uh, environments and everything in between. And uh, everything that you've mentioned, um, these technologies need to be and are designed, most of them are designed to be uh, capable of providing security across the full range of potential platforms where services are, are uh, yeah, deployed right now. Uh, so the cloud, um, as it sounds like a truism, still is a driver for changing cybersecurity. Is that true? Yes, well, I'd say the move to the cloud is perhaps the most significant sort of trend that, we, that we're seeing that is is, is driving the, the cybersecurity market. Uh, the adoption of cloud-based services has, as we've been saying, been accelerated by COVID-19 uh, pandemic and the increased need to support employees working from home or remotely. Uh, as a key element of digital transformation, the adoption of cloud computing has impacted just about every IT market segment, and that's including security now, due to the introduction of new challenges around protecting hybrid cloud and on-prem uh, business IT environments. Right, but uh, are organizations already well equipped? Are they prepared for this change? Also, when it comes to cybersecurity, when it comes to consuming SOC as a service, coming uh, consuming um, cloud-delivered security, is the market already mature? and are the customers uh, already mature enough to, to deal with that? Well, definitely the market is gearing towards that. I think I think most of the vendors have have sort of really understood where the where the market needs to go, and they are providing they are providing the services. I think uh, that also. Uh, but the forward-looking organizations who are, who are embracing digital transformation and who are already on that journey uh, are, are doing the security alongside, which is the way it should be always. We, you know, we always advise organizations that security shouldn't be an afterthought. It should be something that is integral with what you're doing, uh, with what you're planning. Um, and so those are the, the leading organizations are doing that. I think for uh, much of the market, un unfortunately, the security is still very much an afterthought uh, for many organizations. It was just a question of how do we get our people productive? How do we keep uh, the production, the means of production going? Um, and then security became sort of like a secondary consideration. And I guess that's where the cyber criminals have seen the opportunity is because they, you know, they realized everyone was concentrating on, on just getting things moving again or getting things working uh, under these circumstances. And uh, they were perhaps not paying all the attention that they, they should be. So in terms of acquiring uh, uh, new technologies and also attending to, to um, uh, security, you know, people, organizations need to think of these things uh, together. But in addition to the, the, the technical changes, uh, there have been several non-technical trends that, that I've seen. Uh, for example, organizations are now thinking about developing cybersecurity skills within the organization. Uh, they're also looking more at securing supply chains to ensure business continuity and blocking cyber attacks through supply chain weaknesses. So as you know, we've seen several attacks in recent uh, months that, are, that have uh, focused on, on the supply chain. And, and I think this is an area that's it's gaining in importance and also gaining in attention. There is also the expanding on raising the status of the role of the chief information security officers to become sort of slightly broader and more involved with the business and uh, not to be so technically focused. And I think uh, there is also a greater understanding now about the benefits of restructuring operations to ensure that there's a greater alignment between the cybersecurity and the business continuity teams to ensure that continu continuity focused technology investment so that these things are not operating in silos. And then also in terms of organizational change, we've seen the shift to uh, DevSecOps, which in theory is a good idea because it's it's uh, with security and development and operations working uh, together rather than again in silos. So, um, and the other th shift in focus has been 
towards threat detection and response capability. So it's, you know, in, in traditionally the focus of cybersecurity has been more on keeping the bad guys out and, and uh, it's been on sort of protection, whereas now it's, it's more becoming the idea of being able to detect if you've been breached and to respond quickly and efficiently to that. Right. I think that is a trend that I see also in my advisory business and on a daily basis, because um, the, the the more the actual business is moving towards technology or the more technology is involved in, in business, the more it is understood that investing in cybersecurity is not nothing that has to do with this computer stuff, but this is real business. This is uh, making sure that business can continue, uh, that it even can continue in case of an attack, in case of a breach, and this assume being breached approach um, is also reflected in what you just said, being prepared for it and being capable of reacting immediately while maintaining business be going on and making sure that um, this does not um, yeah, break down any system so that, that the machines can keep running afterwards. So this is also a, a really a change in the, in the mindset, protecting cybersecurity, maintaining cybersecurity is maintaining business. I think that is something that is really an, an, an imp important um, um, change in perspective that many organizations already have made and others will have to learn this very soon. And what else does this mean from your perspective for, for business before we come to some, some, some tangible re recommendations where to look at and what to do? So where do you expect other changes in business resulting from this change in cybersecurity? Well, as you said, I think that the most important point is that cybersecurity and the use of IT are now in, inextricably linked. And I've always liked the analogy of, of, of car safety how it's developed over the years. So now you can dr drive cars now that are much more, uh, are safer to drive because they've got all these safety mechanisms built in. And and so I think that's that's kind of uh, where, where we need to go. But the, the fact is that you can only go fast in a car because you've got a set of brakes. So in a way, cybersecurity is, is those kind of break, braking mechanism is, is to say that you can carry on your business and use the technologies that you need to use in terms of, of, of speed to market and all this kind of stuff but because you've got the cyber security built into it 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 means that you can do these things safely so uh, therefore i think both end organizations and end user organizations and it industry including cyber security vendors uh, need to shift their perspective to consider cybersecurity first and foremost as a business enabler, as you were saying. So business uh, needs IT, uh, but IT without security, the cars without the brakes, uh, is worthless because the risk to business is too great. The challenge is to implement the necessary controls and the safeguards in the most frictionless way possible so that security never impedes business pro processes and initiatives. So this means that end user organizations need to consider cybersecurity as a key factor in their technology investment decisions and technology vendors need to build their products in such a way that they can be used safely by businesses and the organizations it shouldn't be extra extra work they should just know okay to use this um, it's got all these uh, safety mechanisms built in as I was saying about the car True. I, I would fully agree. Um, I've, I've said in the beginning that, that we look um, uh, today at this whole topic from an analyst's perspective, although we still don't have this crystal ball that gives us the perspective for the next 10 years, um, we still also have to cover, and we do it, to cover the cybersecurity market in detail and in depth. Um, but nevertheless, if you had five key recommendations to make uh, to our audience, where to look at as of now, where to invest, where to focus, and maybe which aspects to cover which are not mainstream as of now. What, what would be five key recommendations that you would, um, that you would uh, give to the audience? Uh, well, I'd say first and foremost, you'll understand what technologies and capabilities are relevant to cybersecurity and how they fit in and their functions. I think you know, as 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 you know, we we often re recommend that people don't uh, focus on the technology, rather focus on the business need, the business case. But I think it's very important for organisations to understand what what technologies and, and capabilities are relevant and and how they fit in, and then 
you've got to adopt a, a strategic approach to cyber to security to support business objectives to meet the current and future security needs in a consistent way. So understand the business risks of cyber attacks, such as system outages, um, you know, something like a, a denial of service attack, or, you know, we've seen now uh, ransomware, but that's a whole, whole different can of worm, worms, uh, data breaches, reputational loss, and you've got to prioritize those risks that need to be addressed. So, you know, um, downtime for one organization may be super critical, whereas for another, not so super critical. So you've just got to understand your business and what, what, how that makes you vulnerable to certain kinds of cyber attack, and then obviously prioritize those. And then you've got to re-evaluate your ex existing cybersecurity tools so that you can identify the gaps, which tools mitigate the real risks to your business, and which tools can be eliminated because they either don't serve any purpose or just are not relevant uh, to your business. Um, and then overall as well, assume that breaches will happen to your organization. I think, you know, again, this is a whole topic on its own, but more and more people are coming to this idea of a zero trust approach to cybersecurity, where you, you just assume breach, you assume that breaches will happen, and then you plan in terms, in terms of that to make sure that, you know, everyone who's getting access at every step of the way is verified and, you know, authorized and authenticated at each step. It's not just the old model of, of security where everyone who was on the network was just implicitly trusted. Um, yeah, so, you know, then really it's just adopt a zero trust approach to security and implement several forms of authentication to ensure continuous identity verification to stop things like credential abuse and, and lateral movement of attackers. Because I think we've seen that happen in many, many attacks in recent months where you know, that's just the way they get in. If we look at, you know, all the, the, the really high profile ones recently, it's all just been about uh, credential abuse. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know, I wasn't counting. Was that five? <laughs> Was that five? <laughs> I I didn't check that. Uh, I have one one more question. Maybe then we end up with six or seven. Nevertheless, um, we, we as as analysts, um, we often uh, are looking at these more modern, these more um, emerging technologies. Uh, while the, the 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 basics are still uh, are still working, are still available, and are still evolving as well. From from your perception, um, when we talk about integrating machine learning AI into these different aspects of cybersecurity, is this a trend that you also see in your research, or is this overhyped, or is AI machine learning, or has it already arrived in in cybersecurity? Look, I think uh, to a certain extent it, it is it has been introduced in various ways and, and to various extents, and it does definitely have a role to play. I think the most important thing is uh, just again look at look at the particular business use case and see whether there is an application for for an AI assisted uh, tool there, and then just assess sort of how useful that is in, in your situation. I don't think you can just say, well, if it's AI, it's great, go for it, because not all AI is created equal. Uh, so, you know, it's just, you have to look at what is your business case and then look at the technology or, or draw up a list of technologies that could possibly meet those requirements and and then uh, evaluate evaluate that in your, in context of your business requirements. Absolutely, I would fully agree. And although we said we were uh, visionary, we were looking into the future and and, and, and predict, predict a bit what what will come in the in the near future, um, I, I I finally realized that we came to a very um, back to the ground um, position. And and I really like that that you said, okay, do a risk assessment, make sure what really is uh, is threatening your company, make sure that um, that your business um, defines what is important and that you use the solutions that actually fixes your problems. Um, that is something that I really liked about today's um, um, discussion because I think that is um, that is true for today, that is true also for, um, for the future and for a changing environment, reassessing risk, making sure that we consider uh, being under attack and being prepared for that. Um, any final thoughts that you want to share before we close down today? Yeah, so I think just, you know, looking forward, I think just prioritize investments in security intelligence platforms, because I think that's really important. You know, you need to really know what you, you are, what you're dealing with. 
uh, with uh, identity and access management uh, that you know I think that's really at the core of 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 of, of everything and uh, things like user behavior analytics know what you what people on the network are doing or what people and things on your network are doing uh, make sure that if you are doing devops that you are you are you have security for devops um, investigate ai assisted tools and, and make sure that if you uh, have OT, uh, operational technology and uh, IoT environments, make sure that you are, are catering for the security for that as well. And then overall, an integration of cybersecurity with business continuity management. I think that that's really important that these two things work together and that they are not in, in silos. Absolutely. And all, all the topics that you just mentioned briefly were are actually worth at least one episode on their own because this is really um, a wide range and, and cybersecurity is still growing. And with our changing working, in, working environments, um, it is expanding in areas where we um, earlier did not look at. So thank you very much, Warwick, for, for joining me today, for sharing your insights from your research in the areas of cybersecurity. Um, looking forward to having you soon again, meeting you in person and meeting you via camera and talking more about uh, cybersecurity topics and beyond. Thank, for, thank you for today. Same here. Thanks, Matthias. Bye. Bye-bye.